Who's there? It's me. Are you already there? Yes, we here. So, did you do it? No, but we're going to do it soon. You're still with her? Yes, I am. Okay then. See you later. Bye. I know it was hard for you to understand what they were talking about. The reason is a linguistic principle called dyxis. Let's have a closer look at it. Dyxis means somehow pointing via language. The linguistic forms used for pointing are called dyctic expressions or indexicals. There are three categories of dyxis. Person dyxis to refer to people, spatial dyxis to refer to locations, and temporal dyxis to refer to time. They all depend on the context shared by the speaker and the hearer. These categories can be subdivided, so a dyctic expression can either be near the speaker or away from the speaker. Expressions near the speaker are called proximal terms, and expressions away from the speaker are called distal terms. You will see later what that exactly means. The concept of distant already mentioned is relevant to spatial dioxys where the relative location of people and things is being indicated. Contemporary English makes use of only two adverbs which are here and there for the basic distinction. Some verbs of motion such as come and go retain a dialectic sense when they are used to mark movement towards the speaker like for example come to bed or away from the speaker, go to bed. One version of the concept of motion towards the speaker seems to be the first didactic meaning learned by children and characterizes the use of words like this and here that can be seen. They are distinct from that and there, which are associated with things that move out of the child's visual space and can no longer be seen. It is important to remember that location from the speaker's perspective can be fixed mentally, as well as physically. Speakers seem to be able to, to project themselves into other locations when uttering the phrase I'll come later. This phenomenon is called the dialectic projection. But it may be the truly pragmatic basis of spatial dioxys is actually the so-called psychological distance. But what is psychological distance? To receive an answer about what this really is consider the following situation. A woman is sniffing the perfume of a man lying next to her and remarks in a whisper to herself, I don't like that, since the man, respectively the perfume, is physically closer to her, it would be more appropriate to use this instead of that, right? The usage of that suggests distance. Physically close objects will tend to be treated by the speaker as psychologically close. Also, something that is physically distant will generally be treated as psychologically distant. Temporal dialectic expressions are used to indicate time. The indexical now is a proximal term, so it's near speaker. And then is a distal term, so it's away from the speaker. Also, then, in contrast to now, applies to both past and future time. For example, I was in Scotland then would be past time and I'll see you then would be future time. In turn, the proximal form now can indicate either the time the speaker is making an utterance or the time the listener is hearing the utterance. We also use elaborate systems of non dialectic temporal reference such as calendar time, for example, on the 22nd of July I was in Berlin and clock time, for example, back in half an hour. These forms, however, are learned a lot later than those dialectic expressions. Yesterday, tomorrow, today, tonight, next week, this week, last week, just to name a few examples. All these expressions depend on knowing the relevant utterance time for their interpretation, otherwise we wouldn't know how long we need to wait when we see the sign 
back in half an hour. By the choice of the verb tense, you can indicate the proximal or distal form. The present tense is the proximal form. The distal past tense form marks something that took place in the past or something that is extremely unlikely or even impossible. Past tense also is used in if clauses for events that are not close to present reality, for example, if I was rich. They even are so distant that they communicate the negative. The person dixis is used to point at people via language. There are three categories, the speaker I, the listener you, and others such as he, she, it, they. Also, there are two special forms of person dixis, the social dixis and the honorifics. Social dixis are forms used to indicate the relative social status. For example, the German C indicates that the speaker has a lower social status than the listener. Honorifics are expressions of titles that mark that the addressee is of higher status. For example, your, her, his highness. The third person form communicates distance and non-familiarity. Also, it can have an ironic and humorous touch, as in the question, would some highness have some tea? This form is also used as an accusation, as in, somebody did not clean up. Now that you have learned everything about spatial, temporal and person dixis, let's go back to our dialogue from the beginning. It was hard for you to understand what the two were talking about, and you know now that the reason is dixis. So let's identify all the indexicals in the dialogue. Can you find them? Alright, here are the indexicals for spatial dikes. These are the indexicals for temporal dikes. And here are the ones for person dikes. The problem is that we don't know the actual meaning of the indexicals. Only the interlocutors do. This is why we don't really know what they are talking about. I hope I could help you to understand the topic of dikes. Thanks for watching. Bye!